Week one of the fantasy football season was absolutely nuts to no one's surprise. So let's talk some running back rankings for week two. We're going to have Bijan Robinson at one, Brees Hall at two, and Saquon Barkley at three. Now, you're not seeing Chris McCaffrey here. He's unlikely to play, so we are going to be operating under the assumption that he's going to miss. Jordan Mason will be taking his spot instead. But obviously, if he does play, he will still be the 101 for running backs. Saquon Barkley is the biggest takeaway here, where he had 33 points in week one. However, I'm not going to jump the gun and have him as my running back one, because a lot of that was from the three touchdowns, right? Which isn't super sustainable. I know the Eagles offense is great. I think they are going to be very good. But I'd still rather have Bijan, who was a big, big part of the Falcons, even though they didn't look great in week one. Tyler Algier had three carries, I believe. He was a non-factor. Everything you want to see. Brees Hall looked pretty good in week one as well. So nothing too major there. Then we're going to drop it down. We're going to have Jameer Gibbs at four, Jonathan Taylor at five, and Kyron Williams at six. So that next little mini tier. I think it doesn't really matter for these guys, the matchups, but with Gibbs and Taylor, Gibbs is playing against the Buccaneers, Taylor is playing against the Packers, and I do like Taylor's matchup a little more. He stacks up very well, actually, efficiency-wise against the Packers, especially they should be struggling with no Jordan Love, but Gibbs, I just have to give the nod. Taylor didn't look too great in week one. I believe he had 10 points. Gibbs looks super good, even though... He is splitting time with Montgomery. He was getting a majority of the carries and work just like we expected. And Kyron Williams, Blake Corum didn't touch the ball in week one. That's probably not going to be the case moving forward. But it's definitely just another case of people making a big deal out of a little deal because the offseason, because we have nothing else to do but talk about that, which I understand it, but it just never made sense to me. Kyron's still a great back, and if anything, they're probably going to lean on him a little more now that they don't have Puka Nakua, so big, a little, little upgrade for Kyron Williams, and I'm expecting a big week for him. Then we'll drop down to Tier 3, where we're going to have Derek Henry, Isaiah Pacheco, Jordan Mason, Travis Etienne, and Devon A-Chain. Devon A-Chain is probably the big news at the moment because he is a little banged up, and I'm dropping him down to the end of this tier for that because He's a smaller back. The one concern you have with Devon A-Chain is can he stay healthy? If, if he can, there's no question about where he should be starting. I truly believe A-Chain is probably right up there with... He, he's above Etienne for sure. Maybe probably above Mason as well if he was 100% healthy. He looked great. He was used in the passing game. Seven targets. Phenomenal week one, even though he wasn't used that much on the ground. But that's kind of what we've come to expect. You have that explosive ability every time you touch the ball to turn, you know, one little PPR dump off into a touchdown and a 50-yard run, you know, 50-yard run after the catch after that. But it's going to be a big week for H.A. He's playing the Bills. Should be a decently high-scoring game as well. ETN is also a notable player to talk about because Tank Bigsby was involved. I don't think anyone saw this coming. We probably should have listed a little more when the Jaguars coaching staff was saying Tank Bigsby looked really good they're gonna get him involved but it is kind of just like what else are they gonna say so I don't know how much we really should have predicted this Bigsby was the more efficient back but the Jaguars I saw some positive press conference as well where it looks like they are going to be leaning on ETN still now Jordan Mason kind of working backwards here he's gonna be at nine absolutely phenomenal first game 22 fantasy points you plug him right into that 49ers scheme, and he is going to explode. He's not a bad player by any means. I mean, you really have to just not be good to not work with that Shanahan offense. But if you're replacing a guy like CMC in that exact same role, yeah, maybe it's a little volatile, and we can't be expecting 20 points every week. But I think that at the minimum, you're going to get 14 to 16 points this week especially when they're playing the Vikings, and I don't think the Vikings are going to be a team that, they had a good start, but I would not be surprised if the 49ers just walk all over them and, you know, are able to run the ball a ton in the second half. We'll talk about Pacheco and Henry. Pacheco didn't really look great catching the ball. Did have three targets, though. Samaje P. Ryan was a non-factor, so that's all that really matters. So I think Pacheco is going to live up to his price. 
I think he's a fine pick. He's not a guy that I'm super excited about. He isn't a phenomenal pass catcher. He's not blowing anyone out of the water. But he's definitely showing why he deserved to be picked high this year. And that's because he's getting used as a three down back for the Kansas City Chiefs, who looked very good overall. Derrick Henry, still at seven for me. I'm still going to have him super high, especially this week going up against the Raiders. The Ravens should absolutely dominate the Raiders. It, Henry has never been able to catch the ball, so why would they deploy him a ton over Justice Hill You know, in third down scenarios? It, it just doesn't make sense. It's never happened. He's always been more game script dependent. The fact of the matter is that he's just such a good pure runner and is so much better than almost anyone else in the NFL that he makes up for that lack of, you know, pass catching ability by just being so dominant having a ton of touchdown upside year in and year out this is what we know we should have expected a slow start against the Chiefs defense who is very good but the Raiders expect him to come out there and crush which should get him right back on track now we're going to drop down to tier four 12th overall we're going to have Rashad White then Kenneth Walker then Joe Mixon now this is going to be a pretty big tier we're also going to have James Cook we're also going to have Josh Jacobs, Elvin Kamara, and James Conner to round things out. This is a big tier, but two guys I want to talk about is, I think Rashad White is fine. Bucky Irving is not really going to do much. Rashad White just looks like the guy he is. The Buccaneers offense looks much better than some people expect as well, but Rashad White's a solid back. He's going to get that three down skill set because he has the build for it. Bucky Irving doesn't, and he's good enough to where you know, maybe he's never going to be an elite back, but he's never going to be that bad to where you have to take him off the field. Now, Kenneth Walker looked phenomenal. Zach Charbonnet didn't really do anything. Joe Mixon had 30 touches last week. I, I did not see that one coming. Maybe I'm an idiot, but man, if he's getting 30 touches with the Texans, I, I will be ranking him much higher than this, probably over guys like ETN and ATN as long as he is healthy. So, Mixon, I was really surprised by that. I do expect him to air the ball out a little more. They are playing the Bears, so it should be a decently you know, even game. I don't think they're going to be able to rely too heavily on the run. I think it'll be a mediocre game script for um, Mixon. But if he does that same thing again, man, he is going to shoot up boards. James Cook looks solid, like the offense. Thought it was a solid week one performance. Josh Jacobs, man, would be a lot higher than this. He actually looked pretty good in that game. This was no Jordan Love. The offense is not going to be great. Expecting the trail a lot, especially with Malik Willis. That's kind of a double negative for him because he is a rushing quarterback that is going to vaulter those checkdowns for him. And he's not that great to where it's really going to create too much space for Jacobs um, on the read key. But Elvin Kamara and James Conner round this tier out. And two other backs, Kamara did, had a pretty solid week. Again, getting five targets in week one. James Conner, also great as well. As long as they're healthy, they're going to be top backs. I just am a little hesitant about Kamara versus the Cowboys. We'll see how that matchup looks like. I just don't really know what, what that's going to be. And then James Conner versus the Rams. Again, not two matchups that I'm particularly in love with. But they still are very good, still very consistent. I think having them as back-end RB2s for the week is a fair price. Now, we're going to round this out with Ramondre Stevenson at 19. Aaron Jones is going to be at 20. Tony Pollard is going to be at 21. Montgomery, 22. J.K. Dobbins, 23. And DeAndre Swift, 24. The biggest riser by far is obviously... J.K. Dobbins, I'm a big fan of him, especially against the Panthers, who look god-awful, expect the Chargers to run all over him. I'm still a little scared. Dobbins is very risky. I understand. I saw a tweet where they're saying, oh, Dobbins was, no, no, he hit 19 miles an hour as a top speed. And yeah, that is great. He He's not suffering from that Achilles all. He still has his burst. Yeah, maybe he does, but they're saying, oh, he's out of shape. Does it make it that much better? I mean, he had a whole offseason to recover. I I guess that'll get better, but it's just a little scary with that. He looked he looked great at some times, but there are other times that just scared the crap out of me with how he looked after those first 20 yards and the, the ending. 
You know, that is just the risk you have where he could fall off at any week. And he also just, I hate calling players injury prone, but when you have a guy that can gets injured in the same way over and over, that is when the term is very appropriate. Then we're going to, you know, jump back to the beginning. Ramondre Stevenson looked great. Should not be surprised. He was a fantastic value this year. He's a great talent. The Patriots do suck, but he's going to get work as a pass catcher. Jacoby Brissett should be decent enough. And then hopefully Drake May will take over. I think Stevenson should be a running back two with upside all year long. Aaron Jones, great as long as healthy. Had a big week one. And Tony Pollard, man. I'm telling you, I was on him. I said, start Tony Pollard. And I'm going to say it again. People are still disrespecting him in a pretty good matchup against the Jets, who have one of the, I believe they are allowed the seventh most fantasy points to running backs in week one. It's decently enough high scoring. The Jets offense is, you know, pretty solid. And Pollard had 16 carries compared to Spears at four. He is that guy. He had four less routes run than than Spears and he had the same number of targets with four so he is that clear he's not the alpha alpha but he's getting 65 70 percent of the overall work which is exactly what we want to see we don't want him to see we don't want him to get 100 percent of the work we don't want him to get burned to the ground like he was with the Cowboys but if he's getting you know that important touches and then having Spears come in help him out spell him he is going to have a great season. Remember, he had 15.6 points per game playing alongside Zeke. So it's not po- impossible for him to be very good once again. Love him. Montgomery's a guy I never really like, but playing against the Bucks, it should be a shootout 51 point over under. So take him there for the touchdown upside. Then DeAndre Swift, decent game against the Texans. Should expect in the pass a lot. Hopefully help them out. The Bears just as a whole... Did not look great. Swift didn't look great either, but there's not really too many other good options at the running back position. That said, though, if you guys do want to check out our full 48 running back and wide receiver rankings, or mine in specific, you can click the first link below or in the comments. It's going to be a link to our Discord channel. Completely free. Got a lot of other great members in there who love talking ball, so if you don't want to talk to me, you can talk to them. But if you want my personal sit start advice, trade questions, you want to see my full 48 rankings, top 24 for quarterbacks and tight ends as well. Click that. Again, it's absolutely free. Let's hop right back in the rankings. So Tyree Kill is going to be our one-on-one here. C.D. Lamb is going to be at two. And Amon Ra is going to be at three. I know a lot of people have Cooper Cup. I will get to him. But these are the guys that I'm just super confident in. Bonafide studs week in and week out. Like their matchup. Hill against the, the Bills. Lamb against the Saints and Amara against the Bucks. Looked in the statistical analysis on that and saw a lot of fancy points, efficiency metrics against their coverages. Um, and I really like these guys for week two. That one dropped down to tier two, and we are going to be looking at Justin Jefferson at four, Jamar Chase at five, AJ Brown at six, and Cooper Cup at seven. We are going to throw Garrett Wilson on the back end of this tier at eight as well. And let's just not waste any time. Let's talk Cooper Cup. 21 targets. I mean, the man is just unreal. You do have to wonder that it was their first instinct. Puka goes out and get him the ball. And the defense for the Lions didn't know what's coming. I'm just a little concerned that people are saying, oh yeah, it's going to be prime Cooper Cup. I don't think he's the exact same receiver. I think he is a little worse. I think defenses will be able to figure out a game plan for him. Just a little better. Obviously, he's my wide receiver seven, so I think he's still great. And they're playing against the Cardinals, so good matchup as well. I'm just a little hesitant. I don't think that people are saying, "Oh, Puka means that we're getting prime Cooper Cup back." I don't. I, let's pump the brake here. That those two are not really too related. Obviously, he was the alpha then, but still, talent-wise, I think he was a decent bit better back then than he is now. Jefferson, though, is also a big guy to talk about because Sam Darnold looked a lot better than most people expected. It was against a not great defense, but still, Jefferson, I think, as the best receiver in the NFL, his quarterback looked good enough. I think he has to be at four because otherwise, if he was still playing with Kirk, he would probably be at one. Jabbar Chase, getting his feet under him, he had 12 points, obviously not practicing still with the team, not sure what's going on there, but he was playing. 
The Bengals just in a hole looked really bad. I don't think that's going to be the norm. They never start fast, so not too worried there. A.J. Brown looked great as well. They're playing the Falcons, and I'm big on the Falcons this week. So I think this will turn into a high-scoring shootout. Kirk Cousins is going to bounce back. I think they're going to be going back and forth. Love A.J. Brown. Just love his floor-ceiling combo. And I think I was a little low on him coming into the year. Week 1, past the eye test, looked phenomenal. Garrett Wilson, we have Rodgers. Not a great showing. Needs to get a little more involved in the red zone, but still an elite talent. Still believing in him against the Tennessee Titans. So at 9, we're going to have Drake London. At 10, we're going to have Debo Samuel. At 11, we're going to have Mike Evans. At 12, we are going to have Nico Collins. And at 13, we're going to have Jalen Waddle. So that's going to be Tier 3. Drake London, I'm super high in. All the advanced stats, everything is in his favor this week. If he doesn't have a big week against the Eagles, I would start panicking. And I would panic myself because I just traded out of Nico Collins to upgrade to Drake London. Um, So I'm bought in on London personally i i just think that he is the better talent the nico i think he's gonna have a better week this week and going forward he can be a true dominant alpha in the league we just need Kirk cousins to get himself you know back to fully healthy he looked very rusty it wasn't great bad all around just a weird game i'm willing to throw that out and i think there are much better days ahead for kirk and the offense now that he had his first game in the nfl or first game in the NFL back since the injury. I think he's going to look a lot better. I think he's going to feel a lot better. And against the Eagles, I think they are both going to rise up to the occasion occasion, and have that true breakout. Debo Samuel is going to get a small bump as well with the CMC injury because he had eight carries, including that rushing touchdown. Phenomenal. Ayuk is also a little rusty. So everything is helping Debo out. And he was already a great player coming into the year. Now they have a pretty decent matchup as well against the Vikings not a great defense Mike Evans Baker Mayfield look great the two dominated just consistent and he's shown that if healthy as long as he doesn't fall off near the back stretch of the year due to his age he is going to be a low-end wide receiver one to even mid wide receiver one every single week Nico was the clear one on the Texans so he's playing basically every single time snap that Stroud drops back he's a fantastic talent Big week one, I believe 16 points, so can't rank him much lower than that. I'm just a little concerned that the volatility of the weeks, you have Diggs there, who I'm not a big fan of, but I think Tank could grab the touchdown and kind of take away from Nico. Joe Mixon also getting 30 carries is a little worrisome because I don't know if they're all going to be able to eat if that happens. Just the Colts are so bad that I think that it was the perfect storm for everything to go right. But there are a lot of ways that things can go wrong with Nico that he'll still be good from an NFL perspective, but he just won't be as dominant as we hope from a fantasy football perspective. Now, writing out this here, we have Waddle. I was a little banged up. I believe he had that concussion, but as long as he's healthy, he looked very good playing next to Tyree Kill. Again, let's not forget the talent that he is. Phenomenal player. I believe he had 16 points, including the fact that he didn't play the whole game. Now we'll drop down to tier 4, and that's going to be 14 for Devontae Adams, 15 for Chris Olave, 16 for Marvin Harrison Jr., and 17 for Rashi Rice. I really want to move Rashi Rice up, and I think that I probably will end up doing so. In fact, I'm just going to move it here right now and adjust my personal rankings later. But Adams, I'm still a fan of. I think Minshew didn't look as bad as people thought. I think he's still a solid quarterback, though he's never going to be the most exciting option. Adams looked fine. He's still going to have that role. Not necessarily the highest ceiling in the world, but I think he does have a, a good enough floor-ceiling combination to warrant ranking him as a high-end wide receiver, too. And they played the Ravens this week, so should be behind, should be fairly high-scoring, and should be throwing the ball a ton. Olave, just weird week. They're playing the Cowboys, though. Expect this to be high-scoring as well. I think that... Those passes that Rashid Shahid caught definitely could have went to Olave. Didn't seem like the game plan was in his favor. Just a weird week. I throw it out. The more encouraging signs that Derek Carr didn't look complete garbage. Rashid Rice looked amazing. I feel like such an idiot not recommending people to draft it. I mean, I've heard people cop into Amara St. Brown, and that may be the nail on the head. But, man, Rashid Rice looked so good. 
playing next to Patrick Mahomes. It doesn't even matter who they're playing. They are playing the Bengals. So if they if the Bengals can get their stuff together, that should be a high scoring game as well. Rasheed Rice, man, is unbelievable. If you got him in the late round of drafts because of that suspension, well, you should have been taking him there anyway, even if he did get suspended for two to four games, which was the most that was going to happen because that, that kid is really good. He is not maybe the best NFL receiver, but he's playing with the Chiefs. He's running slants. He's running low dot routes, and, man, he is turning them into big plays. Marv did not have a great week one at all. A little concerning, actually very concerning with what we're hearing from the Cardinals saying, Kyler, it's not my job to get in the ball. It's the OC. Not a, It's a whole storm of mess. People are saying he looks sloppy, but I'm not going to drop him out. I know someone that's not starting him this week over Jerome Ford. I, I feel like we may be going a little crazy, a little overreactionary because we have, we have one game where we're saying, oh, Marv is a bust. Marv is washed. Well, why don't we just go and look at the whole offseason of tape and just see how good of a prospect he truly is. I, I get it. It's not during NFL, against NFL defenses, but still, like, let's, if he's a borderline first round pick, early second round pick, let's not make that drastic of a change. I'm not sitting Marv in week two. I'm sorry, but I, I think that there is definitely a worry to be concerned if things are on a downward trend after week three then I would consider it. But for now, we're going to have him in our starting lineups. At 18, we're going to have Brandon Ayuk. 19, DJ Moore. 20, Malik Neighbors. 21, Michael Pittman. 22, Devonta Smith. 23, Tank Dell. Now, you're saying, where's Stephon Diggs? I'll just split it for you. Let's, let's round it out. Diggs is going to be 24. I have him behind Tank Dell, and we'll... We'll wrap up the video with that. I want to. That's my most passionate take. That's some content that I absolutely love talking about. Ayuk looked rusty, but he's still a great receiver. Again, they're playing the Vikings, so fine matchup against that secondary. DJ Moore, a little more excited this week because Rome Odunze is probably going to miss. Like him, I think that Caleb should have a much better week two than week one. As the weeks get on, he will settle in and look a lot better. Malik Neighbors actually looked pretty good. I believe he had 11 points off of five catches for 54 yards. Around then, um, would be like 10 and a half. I just did the math myself, but besides the point, even without a touchdown, Daniel Jones just looked horrific. I was a little optimistic that he would not just completely suck. He let me down. I was wrong, so I'm a little scared. But I think Neighbors is a truly almost generational talent. I think he's good enough to transcend situation so still having him as a wide receiver too because of the upside he provides every week if Daniel Jones finally learns how to play football or if say remembers it if you think he was ever decent Michael Pittman kind of weird week Anthony Richardson was also really weird he, he crushed fantasy football off nine completion he's just a guy where you never know what you're gonna get on a week-to-week -week basis which you don't love for your wide receiver one and he was hitting Alec Pierce on those deep shots, so a little concerned. I don't know if Pittman is going to be the guy that gets peppered with targets, but I, he's still he's still a clear one for the Colts. I think Richardson shouldn't. We shouldn't be expecting that kind of performance week in and week out. I think Pittman should be much better, especially they're playing the Packers. I think that should be a fairly easy game for them. Where Richardson, even if he's not great, they should be fine throughout the game. Devonta Smith looked very good as well. Playing against the Falcons, again, predicting that to be a high-scoring game. So I want pieces of that. Now, let's try this off with Tank Dell versus Stephon Diggs. Stephon Diggs might be getting overrated again and again and again. Or Tank Dell is just super underrated. I'm not sure. I'm going to be dropping a film breakdown on Tank Dell on the Fantasy Trading Room channel. So look up Fantasy Trading Room. Check that out and be ready for that. But... Tank Dell had more targets than Stephon Diggs. He had seven targets. Diggs had six. I get it. It's one target. Not a big difference. He, Diggs had more routes ran than him, which is important. But we're just saying, oh, Tank is the... Diggs had two touchdowns. He's back. He's prime Diggs. He, he's, he's totally fine. You sure about that? Two touchdown passes caught? 
out of three receptions doesn't seem very predictive. Um, or no, he had two touchdown passes out of six catches. Doesn't seem very predictive to me going forward to call him back, call him elite, call him so much better than Tank Dell. When Tank Dell was getting targets deep down the field, just kind of got unlucky a bit. And I, I don't know, man. I just like Tank. He, I thought he looked better than Diggs. Diggs had the red zone, the red zone usage with those two touchdowns, but... Dell had a red zone target as well that I thought could have been hauled in if things worked out better than him. I'm just betting on Dell for now, but I understand if you want to put Diggs ahead of him. I'm just personally not going to do it. I personally can't do it. But that's going to wrap things up. Again, if you guys do want to check out our top 48 rankings, you want to talk some ball with me, you have any personal start sit questions, trade questions, any fancy questions, or just want to talk with other people that love playing fantasy football, check out the first link below. It's going to be a link to our free Discord channel. Link will also be in the comments. But again, be sure to like, comment, subscribe on top of that. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.